Hello guys, welcome to Easy TV Presents Tech View, another episode today. Um, I'll continue the part three videos. I already made uh, two parts, part one and part two. So part one and part two I cover, I'm following this diagram to complete my home lab, VMware home lab. So we already built Active Directory domain control zero one. Uh, we already done with the rate, con rate configuration, I think, up to here is my first part, and then AD DNS is my second part. So I already built machine, virtual machine, and this is 01, DNS 01, and DNS 02, and also jump machine. Um, so now to raise the part three, which is vCenter uh, installation configuration, and then how add a machine with the domain, uh, with the, how we're gonna add a ESXi host, in, uh, in inside the base center, and also how we can um, um, uh, configure what is called uh, share storage, share storage. So actually, uh, with the base center, it's gonna be maybe part three and part four because base center has a lot of configurations. So it needs to have like at least two three parts. But I'm not sure it's gonna be part after part three is gonna be part four as a sequence. For this one, maybe something else. But uh, for this center, it's gonna be two, three parts, like um, installation configuration and uh, BSM configuration is maybe one part, and then network configuration, some other configuration, we're gonna make another part, okay? So let's start it. Uh, BMR home lab design. So now in our environment, I don't have any, I have only three hosts. Uh, which is 11, 12, and 13. So I logged in already, I don't have any. So now all the, all the um, I'm going to log in quickly. I'm going to log in quickly. All right. So I have a machine, I have a machine here, but I don't have any machine here. So vCenter server itself is a virtual machine, right? And I'm gonna deploy that virtual appliance, virtual machine that applies in this machine, which is, which is ELS host number three, ESX host three in here. And IP number is 13, okay? So the deployment process is, uh, this is my laptop. So this is my laptop. Actually, I'm not gonna do anything with, from a laptop because my laptop is running with Wi-Fi connection and Wi-Fi can be disconnected anytime. But what I can, I should do, this is my, um, this is my, um, actually I'm using M remote NG. So uh, I have a three machine, four machine actually, uh, domain control number one, DNS 01, DNS 02, and also I have a jump machine, ELS DBM jump machine. So anything, whatever I gonna do, any kind of operation I will do from my jump machine because this jump machine is a virtual machine and it's a part of my server environment and my all server, I have total three is a server. All three server is connected directly with my network directly with a cable. So, they, so the machine has a cable connection. That means all the virtual machine has a cable connection. Like it's gonna seems like it has a, cable connection. So network, network side, I will not have any kind of interruption. And also I will have a better speed because the cable connection is better than a Wi-Fi connection. So that's why I copied, I download the BMR, see here, BMR BCS, that means vCenter server, vCenter server appliance BCSA and 6.7 version. This is the bin number 2540. Maybe it has more updated, but it's okay. Uh, today I'm gonna to show you how you can deploy this appliance and and then um, how you wanna add the ESXi host with the vCenter. So vCenter has two steps implementation. I will show you the both two apps steps. So you can run ISO file from any place from your laptop or maybe your jump machine. So I always, I do always, I always recommend to run it on the jump machine because it's, it's secured and flexible and also you'll have better speed, better performance. All right, 
So how are you gonna do that? You have to right click on it and say mount. When you mount it, it's gonna mount as a CD-ROM and it will open a window. See, it's already open a window. And you have to go to the BCSA UI installer. See here, inside. And then 64 bit, it has a lot of stuff here, but you don't have anything install, install, installer here. You have to go to the 32 bit. This is the way, this is how you have to do installation. See here, installer is here, application. Right click on it, run as administrator. So I'm running from my jump machine. I'm running from my jump machine. So today we are working based on my plan, we are working on number eight, zero eight, right? All right, so it's loaded. You see here, install, upgrade, migrate, restore. We are not doing restore, we are not doing migrate, we are not doing upgrade, we are just brand new installation, right? So I have to click here, install. Okay, go, oh, is there any way I can go back? Ah, there's no way, right? Left, okay, yeah. Install a new vCenter server appliance or platform service controller. So click install and then introduction, click next. In here, you see here, deploy appliance and then set up appliance. So the first stage, stage number one is deploy appliance and step number two, stage number two is set up the appliance. So now we are in stage number one, deploy the appliance, so they click next. And user license achievement, you have to accept it, click next. And then in here, select the deployment type. So vCenter server with an embedded platform service controller, and another one is external platform service controller, but it will, it will duplicate a deployment method model, duplicated because in uh, and <clears throat> vCenter 7 or vCenter 8, uh, platform service controller is not anymore exist. So you shouldn't be do that, but previously from 6.0, 6.5, 6.7, it has a platform service controller, so you can, the platform service controller as a separate um, as a separate appliance or virtual machine, and then vCenter is a different virtual machine. You can do that. vCenter with external platform, vCenter uh, or embedded. But but I'm not going with this external platform service controller because because if you do that, you have to deploy two machines. It's, it's too much headache. You have to maintain one machine, two machine, two machine you have to maintain just for the center access. And also it's, it's going to be deprecated on seven, ESXA seven and like the center seven and the center eight. So I'm not going with this. So I am selecting this one and by default it's selected embedded platform service controller. All right, click next. Appliance deployment target. So ESXA host or vCenter server name, vCenter host. So my ESXA host number, I already explained to you. I have a <coughs> third host number, <coughs> ESXA host, which has the IP address of 13, right? So I can use this one, 192.168.1.13, which is my third ESXA host IP address. And I know the username is root, and I know the ESXA password, Okay, click next. Now click yes. All right. Now the name of the appliance VM. So appliance VM can be any name. Appliance VM can be any name, but I always, so that name would be your um, inventory VM name, inventory VM name. But the actual VM name we're gonna set up later on. But I always recommend to have the inventory BM inventory name and the actual name should be the same. That's how you can easily monitor or you can easily identify. Okay, so our name should be B center six seven. B center six seven dot ELS dot com. That should be our name. 
And that's also our fully qualified domain name. Set root password. Now you have to set the password for this. I always use the same password for all my admin, admin level and root level access. It's easy to remember. And confirm password, the same password. Okay. Okay, now select the deployment size. Tiny deployment, with the tiny deployment, you the VM, the plus VM will consume two B CPU and 10 gig of memory. And storage, it will consume 300. And host up to 10 hosts. And small deployment, so you can manage 10 ESXi hosts with this vCenter deployment, with the tiny deployment. But if you deploy um, small deployment with this deployment, you'll be able to manage how many ESXi hosts? 100 ESXi hosts and 1,000 virtual machines. Depends on your environment, how big your environment is. And also you have to estimate like after 10 years or after five years, how many, what should be your size of the VM, like how many VMs you'll have and also how many hosts you'll have. Based on that, you're gonna select the, ahead of time, you have to make a plan, you have to select the size. Medium, you can handle 400 SXI hosts and 4,000 virtual machines. It's a huge, right? With one, one B center. So mine is pretty small environment. I have three SXI hosts. Maybe later on, I will have another four, three or four SXI hosts. So I can manage all those um, with the tiny deployment. So I'm not changing this one. So click next, data store, enable thin disk mode because whatever the data store is looking for provision. So free space I have on my local data store, I have 127, it's gonna provision 1.41 gigabyte, which is supported and, and enable thin disk mode. I always recommend to use thin provisioning. Install on a new BSM cluster. Okay, we are, we're gonna, it's gonna give you BSM data center, BSM cluster name. So I'm not actually doing this. Existing data store accessibility from the target host. Okay. Click next. Okay. Now, network, VM network, IP, IPv4, IP6. Assignment static, okay, FQDN. So now you have to create the FQDN for a B center. So ahead of time, you should create it because you need here. What should be your B center? FQDN. So we already plan, that's I'm going to, uh, I'm going to DNS server to create a DNS entry for my B center, right? So you should do it ahead of time. So for a lookup John here, what should be my name? So it's new host A or a record. Right click on it and then what should be the name? B center 67, right? B center 67. B center 67. See here, B center 67.yellows.com, which is which is fully qualified domain. And I already know the IP address because I have an IP spreadsheet. I already booked an IP address for this, which is IP number 40, right? And if you look at my um, diagram here, I put here 40, right? So based on that, so it should be IP number 40, right? I already, I already have a plan. So what's the IP? 192.168.1.40 and add host. Then.
So reserve lookup zone. Okay, so I have this, right? So I have already created, I have already created a DNS entry, FQDN for my vCenter, right? So this is the vCenter fully qualified domain name. And also you can you can check it on the in here, you can say NS lookup and then try this one. See, now it's resolving. And you also you can run, you can check from here, CMD. NS lookup for checking the DNS, you can run NS lookup. See, it's resolving, right? And also NS lookup with the IP address 10 dot, sorry, not 10 is 192.168.1.40, right? So both way I am I can I am able to resolve the name name to IP IP2 name. This is the way you can check after you get okay. So everything looks good. I have it. So what the FQDN vCenter 6.7.0.com. I just created, right? And IP address is 192.168.1.40. And then subnet mask 255.255.255.0. And default gateway, I know 192.168.1.1, right? And DNS server 192.168.1.4. Another one I have. 192.168.1.5. So how I got this, if you can see here, IP config, you see here, what is the IP number? Four, for this machine, DNS01 is IP number four. And if you come here and check CMD, Okay, so IP config, enter, oh, not typing. IP config, hit enter, this is number five, right? Number four and number five. So that's what I mentioned here. And click next. So now, we have everything here. We have everything here. Click finish. So stage number one, we are running and it's gonna take uh, about 30 minutes. So I'm leaving here and I'm going to do, pause the installation, sorry, Pause the recording, and whenever it's done, I'll I'll back again. Yeah, actually, within um two three minutes. Oh no, maybe not. Yeah, not five minutes actually. Less than five minutes, I come here, like ninety five percent almost. Less than five minutes. So hopefully, it's gonna be finished. So in total time. I'm not sure previously when I installed, it took a long time, like around around 20 to 30 minutes. But now it's deploying very quickly. Maybe my server is responding very good. That's why. Um, and also the another, another reason is I'm running this installation process from my jump machine. And jump machine is actually a virtual machine on my environment. So it has a physical connectivity, like it's a virtual machine, but it has a physical connectivity through the ESXi host. So that's why maybe the process is doing very fast. So, so look like, um, what time I started here? Maybe um, my time is not the same. So seems like I started five minutes ago. All right, it's done. It's very quick. So stage one is done now. We are approaching for stage number two. Okay, continue. Now it's gonna be it's gonna taking to us to the second step. Stage number two. All right. So stage one is done. Then if you click next, it's the second step. 
All right. So the time synchronization mode, synchronized time with the ESXi host is very important or NTP server. If you don't configure it right now, you can do it later on, but, uh, but that's just, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any NTP server yet, but I'll configure NTP server and I'll show you guys how you can configure NTP on your any machine. And so I'm gonna configure um, uh, NTP on maybe my any, any machine. You can have a separate, completely separate NTP machine. In, in enterprise level, they have separate NTP server. But in my case, I'm not doing separate machine. I'm doing the same machine. Uh, one of the machine because I, I want to save a machine because I have a small environment. I, I cannot run too many machines for too much for separate, separate application. So NTP server service, I can run on one of my machine, existing machine. And I didn't configure it. I will configure it later on. But in here, uh, I can use NTP server as my domain controller, number one. So 168 dot one dot two. SSH access. So you can enable it because disable means for vCenter server high availability HA, enable SSH access. So vCenter has enabled another high availability. That means if one vCenter goes down, another vCenter will be available. In that case, if you have a two or three vCenter with high availability, you have to enable this one, SSH. And also for some other reason, if, if you get logged, if you wants to do the party session, you should have SSH access. So you can say enable and click next. Time synchronization settings. It's trying to synchronize the time. The login to be center server appliance suit and for okay enable to okay session all right so it's enable and click next. All right, it said, now create a new SSO domains. That means single sign-on domain. So you can keep it in bspr.local. A lot of people, they do bspr.local. But if you do like uh, professionally, you should have your own SSO domain. It's, it's a small domain like as the Active Directory domain. So Active Directory domain means I, I have created ELS.com or syslab.com, whatever is .com, .net, .lab, whatever, dot anything. It's not mandatory, you have to have a dot com. You can do dot lab, dot something. Active directory also you do, you can do the same. I, create, I have created ELS.com, but instead of ELS.com, I can have ELS.lab, that's not a problem. But you have to use dot something, that's the thing. So in here, you have, this is a very small uh, single sign-on domain for only the B center. But Active Directory is for all your whole environment, right? So you have to create a new one. So I can give you an example, like how, how you can come up with a name. So think about, you have two sites. One is disaster site, DR, another is primary. So you have a primary site means you you, your main data center and maybe in your uh, state, in, in your location. So I live in Virginia, so I can say BA, uh, prime BA, primary BA, that means it's primary site. And maybe you can have another data center is uh, Texas. You can say DR Texas or DR site. It's up to you. So I can say P-R-I-M-A-R-Y primary, Primary.local, it's fine. Primary.local. Here I am primary.local. Maybe I, I, will, I will have another one where I will get. So what should, what's the name I put it here? 
please, you, ha you should have it not in somewhere. Because later on, if you if you forget it, you cannot log in. So the SSO name, SSO, uh, single sign-on name I use, primary.local. And single sign-on password, what should be the password? Whatever the password you want, you can put it. But I always use same password for root, administrator, for SSO single sign-on everywhere. And click next. All right. So whenever it says join the BMO customer experience, don't use it. Just uncheck it. Click next. And ready to complete. And finish. It says it will not be able to pause or stop the installation from completing once it started, okay? So if you click okay, you cannot go back, okay. So this configuration also will take maybe another 20 to 30 minutes, but I'm not sure maybe it can be done um, less than that, maybe within five or 10 minutes. So until then I'm going to pause the recording and whenever it's done, I will bet. All right, so uh, it's done. It's 100% completed. So now I'm closing this one. So my installation is completed successfully. And let me check. Um, so this is the SSA host number three and I need to log in there. So you see here, the machine is here, it's ready. And what should I do? So if you can look at here, HTTPS, bcenter 617 Um. So, and also IP address is 40. So let me check here with the FQDN. What is the FQDN? I forget. So let me check from here. Um. This is FQDN, right? This center seven. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my jump machine from here. This is my jump machine. Okay. Okay. So hit enter. Advance, proceed, I'm safe, okay. It doesn't matter. So launch BSPR client HTML5. This is 6.7. All right. So now you need to log in there with the local because we don't have any other user because it's just first time login. So we have to log in with single sign on administrator, which is our single sign administrator. Uh, if you guys can remember, when we set it up, we provide this, right? Primary.local is our domain, SSO domain. So you have to do what? A-D-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-A-T-O-R at the stator at primary.local or primary bcenter.local or prbcenter. whatever you want. But we provided the domain, single sign or domain name is Primary.local. So you have to use primary.local. So administrator at primary.local. And your password and login. Wow, wonderful. Look like we are successfully logged in. So we successfully logged into our base center, and our base center is uh, nothing is a brand new installation. So what do we should do the brand installation? So the first thing is there are, okay. The first thing is you have to create a data center. Create a new data center. This is your first task. So what should be the data center name? It's anything based on your plan. So if you have planned to have a multiple department as a multiple 
uh, data center, you can add it. So if you have a dedicated SXA host for some dedicated department, you can have the dedicated data center for them, or you can have one data center and because under one data center, you can have multiple cluster or the, the cluster name you can supposed to be used as a department name or something, right? But data center, you don't need to have multiple, but if you want, you can do that. So my data center name is, you can, I can say ELS data center. It's not mandatory, you have to have a, uh, all uppercase. It's look nice, that's why I use all uppercase. Okay, ELS data center is my data center name. So whenever I have a data center, I can add host here. So how you can add a host? So the host um, fully qualified domain name. I'm not sure my all host has a fully qualified domain name. So root, okay, root, okay. So none of the host has this. So let's, let's check. Actually, I put ls.com. Why it shows local domain.com? I'm not sure why it is. Okay, and another thing I have to make sure. So what's the host name? Uh, my host name is ELS, ELS host 01, right? ELS host 02, ELS host 03. So make sure I have a DNS entry for all three ESXA hosts. I believe I don't have it. I don't have it. So let's create new host and record. So what's the ELS? For the name, let me check again. Um, ELS host zero one. Let me copy this one. Let's copy this one. That's good. Copy and this is here. That's easy. So okay. And what the IP address? One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot eleven. This is my first host, right? Add a host. Okay, done. Then the second one is number two, right? And uh, which is 192.168.1.12. Add, okay, done. And then the third one. And the third one. And so now the third one is number three and I put this is 192.168.1.13. And at host, so I am fully added. So I have all three hosts here. So let me add one by one. I have the name. Refresh it. Refresh it. Okay. I'm not sure why it's showing. Okay, so now I'm going to add one by one the jump machine host. Click next, username root and the password. Okay, click next. I'm a little bit confused with this because maybe I need to reboot my ESXA server because over here it's not showing the ELS.com. But I have a DNS entry, so it should work. Let's see. Yes. Ah, yeah, look like it's working. So License to CPU, okay.
click next and lockdown mode disable when enable lockdown mode prevents the remote user from logging directly into the host so when enable lockdown mode prevents remote user from logging directly into the host the host will only be accessible through local console or an authorized centralized management application if you are uh, unsure what to do leave lockdown mode disabled so if you enable it that means only through the vcenter server the direct console user interface service is stopped the host is accessible only through the local console or vcenter server if you do the normal so the remote user cannot be able to log in there so that's why most of the time lockdown mode is disabled click next and this is the data center click next and finish now the second one add host okay what what, what is filled Why is fail? I don't know. I don't have idea. Why is fail? Everything is done. Add a standalone host. Okay. Okay. So later on, I will re add it later on. Now I'm just going to add as a IP address or 168.1. Because I have to reboot the server and it's going to take time. It's going to work, but I suppose to make sure. Let let's let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. So one next dot one six eight dot one dot eight. This is load. So this is the I direct console for my effective host number one. And keep the default, okay. And so it's called direct user console interface, which is this one. So launch it. All right. Now you have to say escape button. Then uh, F2, right? F2 for the customize. And then password. So I'm going to make it big. All right. So configure management network. Test one. Okay. VLAN. Okay. IPv4. Okay. DNS is okay. Host name ELS host zero one ELS ELS host zero one and this one the problem is here you see here this is the problem you have to hit enter and then escape and you can say yes again go back let's see if came back again here See, it came back again, then the same thing. So if you have to reboot it. Okay. Let me try it again from here. Instead of 
ELS host zero one, right? Uh oh. Uh oh. I didn't put the password. Next root yes this found the virtual machine i'm not sure why it's not able to join i have to reboot it if it is not if it is the case, I have to reboot it again, okay? It wasn't able to connect it. So I think I need to add with, um, because I have to reboot it. I have to, I have to reboot the server, it will take time. Right now, I have I don't have enough time, so I'm going to add with the IP address. I'm going to go one sixty eight one dot eleven. Then the road. And next and finish. Oh, oh, oh and I want to push sign certificate. Okay, let me, I'm not sure what's going on. So let me reboot all the servers. So F, F12 for shutdown, all right. Possibly terminated or F11, actually, actually F11, right? F11, restart, okay. So the restart job is running, restart in progress. I can close this one, I don't need this. And also, um, 192.168.1.9, not 99, not 99, 192.168.1.9 only, 9 only. And and the next one is 192.168.1.9. But 1.13, I cannot reboot it because it's gonna be. <laughs> I'll disconnect from here. So I'll get this connection from everything, everything, everything I'll get this connection. So I'm not, okay. Let's have reboot everything. So uh, I'm going to pause the video because I don't want to, I don't want to spend like killing time for the video just for rebooting. So I'll be back whenever it's done. So the reason I have issues with this every time it says a general, okay, here. A general system error, right? A general system error occurred and I want to push sign certificate to host this. So whenever this one is trying to like send the 
um, certificate to the host from B Center because the B Center timing and um, B Center time and and also the ESXA host time is not same, which is NTP. How you can look at it? So if you look at here, configuration time 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 and TP where's NTP? Actually, I have NTP here. Um, so for example, I logged in here. I logged in here. Base center. If you go to the a uh, time, you can see here. You said using it this one, Thursday 19, 2023. UTC. It's a different time. I'm not sure why it's current compliance time is like that, but it's using the time server there as well, right? And time zone, you should actually you did the time zone. So what's the time zone is our time zone is Eastern time, right? US Eastern. Okay, play with. So now it's changed, right? Yes, John. So the same thing you should do now is saved, right? Now you should go, you see here to the time zone. Now, if you look at here, what it shows the current date and time, December 30, 2019. And so that's why every time when I'm trying to, add is failing so what you should do you should change it so why, how are we going to do that edit individually each sxa host because i wasn't able to add this host with my b center because whenever i'm trying to add the vision uh, sxa host with the b center b center is uh, trying to push a certificate to the sxa host but the sxa host time and b center time is different that's why so we're gonna use ntp time it's a start and stop with uh host and and to service 192.168.1.2, the same, our ID domain control number one we are using. So save. And, okay, why stop? So this one. Start and stop with this. Save, okay. Refresh. NTP service status. Action NTP service start. Okay, it's running. So again, still it's time is different. Why is time is different? So, oh my God, it's really so 2023, right? January, today is 19, Thursday. And now the time is 648, 648 and save. You should take it automatically from, but it's, it's getting UTC time. It's getting UTC time. Anyway, let's try the first one. Let's try the first one. So what should be the server name? Again, uh, the server name is, Yeah, let's host. Let's try it. Add host dot ELS dot com root Wow, wonderful. It looks like it's working. 
All right. So look like it's an NTP having issue. That's why I wasn't able to add it previously. So what I have to do again, so we have to make sure all the servers has a correct NTP time. And this server, why I'm not able to log in there. <laughs> Maybe the firewall is on, okay, no, disable, remote is enable, okay. Everything looks good. So, okay. Just give me a second. Let me, let me do this one. Okay. So this one, host, I'm going to close this one. Manage, time and date. Uh, edit settings. So it should be not this. Should be. Twenty twenty three January. Okay, that's nineteen. Then the time is. 52, 52, say 52 and save. And then again, edit. Actually, I want this one manually start and stop with the host 192.168.1.2. Save. And then action. NTP start. But it's carry the UTC time. I'm not, I don't want UTC time. So later on from this and I will change it. Okay. And here, what I should do, manage date and time and edit the same way. Okay. This one looks good. This looks good. And use this one. Turn this up with the host and 192.168.1.2. Save. Action. And start. So, look like what? Um, now I'll be able to add all those three machines together. Okay. And host. So, ELS. Post zero two dot ELS dot com. Click next root. Okay. Yes. 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 And and finish. Now I'm going to add the second one, a third one. The same way, just here, number three, and yellow.com, next, root, okay, one more row, and all right, yes, next, and the license, is this one, okay. Okay. So this one is added, but what's the, okay. So whenever you see something, so press warning, say yes, this one. Yes, select this one, click here, yes. All right. So the issue I had because of the timing. So now everything is looks good. It's added. And from here, if you want, you can change the time from here too. So you have a time, 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 time. You should have a host of time configuration. See here. Just now it has the exact time. If you look at here. 
if you think it's not good time, so what should you do? And this one has? This is the green, okay, no problem. Now, I have a plan to make, um, create a beeson. So for creating a beeson, what you should do? Now we're gonna do that. You have to create a cluster first, new cluster. So the cluster, I'm not gonna enable uh, DRS and HA right now because anyway, for creating a cluster, cluster means you have to have a DRS enable, HA enable, right? But for now, I'm just going to do vSEN enable. Because I'm going to do a vSEN. And uh, because whenever you're going to configure vSEN, that time you should do what? You should do, um, you should do like DRS and HA disable. So that's why I, I, I'm not going to enable it right now. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to enable it later on after I configure the vSEN. Okay, so let's have a name, uh, compute cluster. Compute, compute cluster. Or you can say, Compute underscore cluster and enable this one. Okay. Okay, compute cluster. So I have created a cluster, but I, I, I have nothing inside the cluster. So how I can put the machine inside the cluster? Nothing. You just select, drag, and drop on the cluster. See here, it's gain mark. Drop it here. And select and drop it here. And select, drop it here. All right, so all three now I have inside the cluster. Now what should I do? Still it's running, it's running. So it's gonna be finished within short time. Update basin configuration. So I'm going to do the basin upload support bundle. Okay, from here, BSIM, right? So select the cluster and then go to the configuration and from the BSIM services. Okay, from the services, turn on or off BSIM, right? So we are going to turn on the BSIM, BSIM, turn on. So when you turn on the BSIM, it's not, and it's going to apply all for all. And then test management. So BSPR DLC is turn off. Edit. Okay. Actually, I'm applying a lot of things set together at the time. So that's why it's taking time. Uh, hopefully everything is now. Work okay. All right, so BSEN services. Okay, now BSEN is turned off. Okay, configure, configure it. So configure single site cluster, two host BSEN cluster, stretch cluster. So I'm not going with the stretch cluster, two host vision cluster, two host at one side and witness host at the another side. So I'm doing the single side cluster, click next. 
and duplication, compression, encryption. I'm not enabling anything. Just leave it like that. Disk now, this claim disk. So this is the main thing for uh, the claim disk, send configuration. So I have claim capacity is two and claim, cache 1.9. How is claim? I didn't do that, right? Uh, host voice. I want to do the host voice. Okay. So this host. <laughs> Each and every host supposed to have Cast here and then this capacity here. So in here, this type claim this for. Cancel. This will configure single size. Already claimed, but I didn't claim anything. How come it's claimed already? All right, so we already deployed the VCSA, which is the center server of funds, 6.7 vCenter. Uh, which is the number eight. And also, what is the number nine? Okay, anyways, uh, okay, number nine is actually deploying um, another active directory. So maybe I, maybe on the next video, I will add this one or maybe I'll jump to here, number 10, because this is optional. If you have, if you want, you can do the secondary one. So maybe on the fourth part, I wanna add how to add another domain controller with the, uh, with the existing one. That's what I can show, maybe, maybe. Otherwise, uh, I'll jump to here, 10, that's the really So. Today I just deployed a uh, center server and I showed today how to add um, ASXA host. So whenever we added the ASXA host, this time we faced some issues um, in here. So I have I just created a new, like a simple cluster. I didn't enable anything, and my target was to create a vSAN. So, but I have three hosts. That's why I'm creating my own. I have also a lot of hard drive. But in your case, maybe you don't have that many hosts. You have only one host. So if you have a one host, then how you can set up, um, like how, how you can do 
a cluster system. You don't have two hosts, you don't have three hosts. So cluster is at least you need two, at least. So that's what I'm gonna show you. Like you don't have the physical resource. So we're gonna create physical resource with the virtual, uh, which is called nested SXI, but you, can, you don't wanna see that environment in reality, but I'll show you. And also I have a video. If you want, you can watch my video. I have, if you go to the YouTube and if you search SDB International and look at the videos, click on the channel, my channel uh, icon. So look, click on the, my channel icons here on the channel icons, then you're gonna get this page and you go to the video. And then somewhere you're gonna find, here I have a lot of videos, see here, the BS, uh, BMR virtual send, vSend setup and configuration step-by-step. I have two videos, I believe, for this and cluster. So you can watch this video, and also maybe I can have another one for the BSEN. Here, BSEN, Nested USXA, complete BSEN cluster configuration. So I'll put these two videos link uh, with the BSEN, so I can it. And in advance, you're going to see it. And also, on the part four or part five, I'm going to um, show it again. So I'll create an SDS XI, which is the path here. So I'm gonna create a four nested master machine. So two machine, I'm gonna create one cluster, another two machine, yeah, it's gonna be SXI actually. I'm gonna install ESXI. These two are gonna be maybe in separate, separate um, cluster. See here with the lab HA cluster BA, another one will be lab HA cluster and one. So B and N Y. So I just change this. Number 10, 10, 11, 15, that's it, that's it. So in 14, 15, okay. So that's all. And in this video, actually, I just installed what? This uh, in the server, step by step, how I install it. And then after that, how I add that this cluster system. So with the B center, there is a lot of configuration we need to learn in another video just for uh, B center, all other configuration. Specifically, like I will make one video for B center um, um, network configuration, like standard switch, distributed switch on those. So that's all for today. Uh, it's pretty simple, just getting a cluster and adding a host, that's it, nothing else. And we'll organize it later on another part of the presenter video. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And if you like my video, please um, give a big thumbs up. And also, if you are if you are new in on my channel, please subscribe my channel. And thank you. Thanks again. Thanks for watching my video.